No, it's fine. Are you sure? Absolutely I wasn't sure fine. if you were going <laughs> to... Me barking instructions at my children. It's great. I'm going to have to do this soon too for uni. Okay. Okay. Joe out of shot. Okay. Mm. Oscar! Oscar, come boys! Bad. Oscar! Come! Oscar! Always good to start the day with a biblical sunrise. Right, let's sit you down somewhere. Somewhere where I'm not going to get piles, hopefully. Sensational. So some of you may or may not have seen this vlog taking over the Mother Spitfire channel. Basically me dressing up as a Christmas dinosaur, reflecting on some really handy tips that I've learned this year. Now the idea was that uh, vlog number 72 was going to be an amalgam of that stuff kind of put together. But I thought seeing as most of that kind of quick tip stuff we've already done, why put it into triplicate? If you want to know about midi chase or that great tip from Olafur, links below. I'm reflecting on the end of the year as an opportunity to step back and see things with a kind of broader look. We're very gu guilty on this vlog and in my life of concentrating on the minutia, on the nerdy detail. If only I got that compressor, I'd be a better composer. This year will be better because of my Bricasti reverb. In fact, we had a meeting the other day at Spitfire and we were talking about general communication issues, broad approach, until someone said, well, we could do with a better spec server, at which point the rest of the meeting was us on our computers, specking out this server, promptly patting ourselves on the back, going on our way, having solved nothing. So a point I wanted to return to today is it's based on a seminar I gave in Japan, which I thought was quite successful. I don't have to put gloves on because it's absolutely freezing, um, literally, minus. And a piece I did during the Black Friday thing, which we did on Facebook. So if you're in Japan or you saw that Facebook thing, skip to the end of, of the film, this time code. I refer back to the most asked question I get uh, posted, which is, what gear do I need to become a media composer? And my answer, dev suicide, is it just doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't define your music, it doesn't define your output, it doesn't define you. So other than, yeah, you'll need a computer because you'll get stuff delivered on a computer and you'll need to deliver back on a computer, the number one investment you must make is in yourself. And I guess one of the most pertinent quotes I've heard this year was coined by Oscar Wilde, allegedly, which was, be yourself, everybody else is taken. And this is the secret, I think, to a happy life, successful partnerships, successful career, is to develop yourself as a human being so you become in demand and so that you can, in turn, satisfy your clients and yourself. I've learned the hard way by having many, many terrible relationships that the key to a sustainable and fruitful and wonderful relationship is to have a relationship where you can be yourself, where you have space to be who it is that you are. And if they don't like who you are, you don't have to change yourself. <laughs> this sounds so poncy but it is something that I think is a, a, a journey we're on, is to understand the world about us, but also to understand about ourselves and to see our weaknesses as our strengths and our strengths as our strengths to equal measure. I think one of the more touching cribs that I did this year was with Dario Marianelli, and he told me something that kind of chilled me to the core. And that was that our key as composers is to ma maintain a connection to our music and to make sure that that music is connected to us. More so than serving the project, serving the client. If you lose your connection with your music, you lose everything. You're out to sea. And if your music isn't you, how can you gauge whether it's good or not? I had a great conversation with Cliff Martinez, sadly not on film, but something that I hope we can capture one day, which was regarding originality. And his view was, if you combine three disparate influences, people that you like, but who are disparate, you will inevitably come up with something that is original. So John Cage, Handel, and Jimi Hendrix is going to deliver something interesting and original, something that is part of your heritage, something that is exciting and new. There's a word that comes up so often when I talk to trailblazers, people who are original, and that is tension. I think my take on it is where your ambitions are greater than your ability. 
that creates a tension and from that a spark of originality. So when I was talking to Martin Ware about Heaven 17, you know, Human League, Sheffield, where did that come from? He said, well, we were kind of good with synths and computers and stuff, and we wanted to be like George Clinton, but we didn't have the ability to be like George Clinton, no matter how much we tried with our synths and our computers. And I think I've heard somewhere, and I must find the exact quote, that someone once said that style is defined by the limitations of your ability. But I think we need to understand that we're basically a, a blender of everything, every piece of music we've heard, every, every piece of art we've looked at, every inspiration that we have felt goes into the Nutribullet that is ourselves. So I think what's really important is that you need to nourish that with original and diverse ingredients. I think you'll notice that you can go to anywhere and get a juice these days, whether it be Pret-a-Manger or McDonald's or, or, or a, a kind of a Whole Foods place. But they're all serving fucking carrot, apple and ginger. I think the kind of the apple, carrot and ginger for us is film music. Don't listen to the same stuff that everyone else is listening to. Don't try and do what everyone else is trying to do. Don't try and make your apple, carrot and ginger. Directors aren't interested in that. They want you. They want something different. I think be confident that your influences are your heritage. And whether you like John Cage, Handel and Jimi Hendrix, just like the same as I do, we won't necessarily put them in the same order. Even if we share these three influences, we take different bits. So returning to, you know, what equipment do you need? What sample libraries do you need? This, that and the other. I simply say to students and stuff, give a composer a sample library and she or he will make our sonatos for a day. Give a composer a microphone and they will make music and sounds and interesting stuff for life, regardless of their abilities. I think experimentation, going into the unknown and investigating your weaknesses and inabilities is something which will create that spark of originality that will be from you, from your heart, that will create a you that people want. I've been through an incredible year this year where I've really backed off from composing. I've refused to work with narcissists and have a 100% score rating for the last year on that count. It does cut down the amount of work I can do. But what I've found is people are starting to ask my agent for me, not for a journeyman who can do a bit of everything and do it quickly. It's locked. Is it locked? It's locked. Can I cross? Safe cross? Yeah. yeah. So I guess I'm coming now to what I consider to be my New Year's resolution, and that is to practice what I preach. I'm not this year going to invest in a new studio and a piano and a Bacassi reverb. I'm going to invest in me. I think a lot of the younger people watching this will be trying to give up smoking as a New Year's resolution. Uh, it took me several attempts. We all know why we must give up smoking. It's bad for your health, and whilst it might not kill you now, it could make life very uncomfortable further down the line. I find it surprising that we don't apply the same methodology to our mental health. So I've pledged, I'm gonna give up smoking, but I'm gonna work hard, I'm gonna do 20 hour days. This is a ridiculous notion that us composers have, that in order to succeed, you must sit in front of a fucking computer all day God sends and not see your family and not nourish yourself. I sit on this extinct volcano, not because I'm a pretentious ponce, well, I'm a little bit, but because I want to try and engender in the people who watch this vlog, he's a fairly successful composer, he's running a company, he still gets time to walk up a mountain, experience a sunrise like we did today, fill his brain with ideas, get his blood pumping. I do return to a point I made in a previous vlog, and that is the number one complaint made by people in the last weeks of their lives is that they didn't spend enough time with their family. No one goes to their deathbed wishing they'd worked more. So what I'm gonna do this year is pledge to look after myself, invest in myself, and that is through cultural exploits, losing a bit of weight, drinking a little bit less, making some more hedge flavored juices, I believe they're quite good for you. And I guess if there's one thing that Spitfire has taught me over the last year in particular is the power of collaboration. That sitting in a cave as a hermit may, uh, may benefit you in some respect, but also joining a kind of avant-garde Japanese uh, rock pop band can also be incredibly fulfilling. My trips to Iceland, my brief conversations with Hans Zimmer have been so nourishing and 
I think that that is another thing that we need to put into our blender. It's not just the things that we listen to and the books that we read, but it's the people that we meet and the ideas that they have about life and stuff. I'm really looking forward to this year. I'm really looking forward to getting back into the cave and dabbling with kit and getting into the minutia. But just thought I'd grab this opportunity, the end of an old year, the dawning of a new, to take a broad look at what I think is important about my approach to my career, to music and to, to life before I start talking about reverb tales. Anyway, as always, thanks so much for putting up with my kind of ramblings. Um, I really appreciate the support you've given me for this vlog this year and I'm looking forward to uh, pastures new with you guys in 2018. Um, I would really like to know what your New Year's resolutions are. Is it uh, like me, drinking less and juicing more? Or is it burning candles at all ends so you can buy that Brocasti reverb? Be very interested to hear from you.